I've had a lot of people ask about um, the mark there on the ground, that wooden block, and why we teach the mark with our horses when we're getting them started. And I've shown it to Annie and had her on it four times now, and I had the great idea that while it's so fresh, um, I should video some of how we get them to start thinking about standing on the mark, and then explain to you guys why we use the mark. So she just came off of it, so I need to be moving her feet. So we're just gonna do more of that groundwork. <clears throat> and sorry, I wasn't planning on videoing anything today, so I didn't bring my robot camera, but this will just be short and easy. Oh. All that she's got, all I've gotta do is just keep her feet moving. And then the idea is, present the mark as a place for her to rest. And then that's supposed to be, while you're teaching it, that's the only place that she gets to rest. So, so she got to stop. I'm just gonna back off. She's done it four times, so she's starting to get the idea. I'm gonna back off and present it and see if she thinks to put her feet on it. She's got one, so I, I let her go, let her have it. <laughs> so it's that easy. The first time, um, and maybe I'll just throw a little clip of introducing it with another horse later. Uh, I've got a paint horse in for training that hasn't ever done it. So maybe I'll just show that. The first time she, you know, stepped sideways around it and came over here and, did, and maybe pawed at it. But the thing is, you don't, you just kind of keep bugging them. Like I kept kind of twiddling with the halter or if you've got a dressage whip, kind of tapping the leg. Or do, it's just you're annoying until they pick up and start showing that they're ready to step on the mark. So I'll have to, I'll send her around again and see if she steps up on it again that easy. Um, but I'll have to video that paint horse and just introduce it to him and show you kind of what that looks like when you're getting them to step on it for the first time. So, and I always have them back off of the mark. Um, I don't ever have them walking over it. So I like to have them back off when I'm ready to get them off. I'll do that with her, work her a little bit, and then offer it again to her. And I'll try to, when I offer it to her, I'll offer it so that you guys can see her, see her head and see her face and see her facial expressions. Because it's really something that, I mean, I would always talk about mentally balanced horses and them letting down and lick and chewing and waiting for that lick and chew to happen and teaching them how to handle their emotions in a way where they can let themselves down real fast and get to that lick and chew. And once they start realizing that the mark is a place of rest, it helps them to let down and relax once they get on it. Um, so as I'm introducing it to a horse, and really using it, especially when I start riding her, it'll be like at the end of every ride, I'll put her on the mark and I'll get off when she's on the mark. Or um, if she's done something that I'm asking for or that we're trying to learn, if she gets it, I might take her over to the mark and let her stand on it. So there she's got to figure that out. And here's that, she just kind of be annoying. I didn't send her off, but I just, that wasn't right. Here, good. Maybe I won't have to video the paint horse. Well, I'll still video the paint horse. That didn't take that long. And here she's licking, chewing right away as soon as she finds that. And you got to pay attention and get your timing right. Watch, if you rewind a little bit and watch my hand, as soon as she starts stepping up, I let off of some of that halter pressure a little bit. If a foot makes contact, I might drop it completely. Um, and then just pick it up again whenever I'm trying to get the other foot on. So you'll see more of that with the paint horse too. But <laughs> and, I, and my body language gets all energetic and annoying too. Horses like us to stay quiet and be relaxed. Um, and, and we're not always going to be like that and they have to kind of learn to deal, but she's got to figure out how to keep me quiet. And I will stay quiet when she's standing quiet and happy on the mark. I'll have to do a whole little clip in here about all the benefits of teaching the mark. But one of the reasons that I, I mean, the biggest thing, I'm so about a mentally balanced horse and getting them using their brain and thinking about what's happening and trying to find the right answers 
so that we can start making things that we want become their ideas. Um, so that's a big thing about the mark. It's really just setting them up and like teaching them to learn, teaching them to look for answers, teaching them to find where things are easiest for them. That, and I, I mean, I don't have to do a whole clip. I mean that, teaching them to learn. Um, then once this is really solid, you can use this when they know to stand on that mark and stand quiet and still like this, you can use it if you're teaching them to ground tie, if you're teaching them to stay standing still for saddling, if you're teaching them to stand for the farrier, if you're anything that you're teaching them, once they know this mark means like, if I just stand on this mark, my life is good, you can use it for anything that you want to teach them to stay still for. <coughs> I'll go one more time with Annie here. So I'm going to back her off. learned about this mark. I did a clinic with um, Craig Moore and Katie Ketterhagen that I hosted when I did my last uh, Mustang makeover in Fort Worth this past January. Well, I had that Mustang. I had them out for a clinic. And they're the ones who showed me this trip with the mark. And I really am happy to implement it into my horsemanship program. All right, so I'm just going to offer it. There, she missed it, so I'm just gonna kind of bug her and annoy her. There's a step. So watch my timing there. Good. Good girl. And right away again, she licks and chews. So I'll do that paint horse for his first time so you can see it's a lot more annoyances um, and higher energy from me when it's their very, very first time and they haven't found it yet. Good girl. We're going to take Annie to the Ozark Spring Roundup at the end of this month. Um, it's in Ozark, no, it's in Springfield, Missouri, near Ozark, Missouri. And it's like a big ag fest kind of thing is what I'm picking up from it. They'd asked me to come as a clinician, so Michael and I are both going to come. Uh, we'll have a booth where you can find me outside of clinician and seminar time, and I'll... Uh, talk about answer questions and talk about horse training tips and what we do um, at Forever T Ranch with our horsemanship program. Michael will be there. He'll talk about uh, Diamond H and his cattle program and his grazing program and grazing tips. So make sure that if you're there, stop by our booth and say hi. Um, I'm going to be doing three seminar sessions, I think, talking about horse behavior and mentally balanced horses. And I'm going to do four round pen sessions with Annie. Um, and I'm planning on putting her first ride on her at that seminar, at that um, ag fest. So that'll be cool. Ozark Spring Roundup. Um, it's the, I don't have my phone because I'm videoing. It's like the 20, March 24th, 25th, 26th, I think. Whatever that weekend is, Friday through Sunday at the end of this month. So I hope you guys can see us there. Um, so yeah, I'll add the little paint horse clip. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel, please. It's different than subscribing to our Facebook stuff. But subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we can get to that 100 subscribers so I can do a giveaway. Then, then we'll shoot for a thousand subscribers. That'd be real cool. So. See, and I will teach her to ground tie. I don't know if we'll get that far today. If we do, I'll video it. But on day one, we might not. So that I can do things like leave her here and walk away and shut my camera off. If we get to it, I'll come back. I'll turn the camera back on and show you guys her ground tying. If not, today, I'll plan for it a different time. She's thinking about it now, isn't she? She's also thinking about coming off. I think we've got the ground tying figured out. She's a smart horse. It makes a difference. Um, Michael bought her from Couch Livestock at one of their sales in Wisconsin. And he had been following them before he went to their sale. 
and kind of knew what he was looking for, something bred well for confirmation and a good mind. And she's got both, so it, it does make a difference. Okay, so here's the paint horse that I just recently got in to train. Um, I think he's four. I forget how old he is. But he's here to get started, doesn't have much. Um, and he's kind of high strung still right now. This is, I think, our third day, third or fourth day. Um, so he doesn't, he's not going to have the groundwork that you see Annie have in that short of a time. But it's the same concept. Um, I'm going to move his feet and only offer him an opportunity to rest on the mark. at the mark so he might be even more difficult than what Annie was when I offer him offer it to him Right now, <laughs> it doesn't mean that it's too much for me to have the mark out and be expecting him to be able to stand on it today. All right, let's see if I offer it to him, how quick he takes to it. So see, he's kind of going to go sideways. So I'm just going to keep my halter pressure on and direct him there. He went sideways, direct him there come forward with it and unless he's on the mark I'm kind of just always bugging him there was an attempt so I took that pressure right off and you can just like everything about my body has to be more high energy just to be annoying so that he finds rest and leave him alone and there, when he kicks it, I kind of give him a break there. But he's going to find rest and leave him alone only when we get there. He kind of picks a leg up. There was an attempt, so that was good. My hand went down. I got quiet. There was an attempt, my hand went down, I got quiet. And now I'm just going to keep bugging him. I took my hand off because he picked that leg up like I thought was going to be an attempt to step on it. There was a step on it, so I kind of was quieter. There was a step where he kept it. And he was on it by now, but this is good for you to see. There, kick it. Look at, it's so hard for him, I really gave him that little step up on it. He's gonna put it together, but life is easiest. the mark. There. There, he kicks it. Ooh, he might be one that gets stubborn and kind of leans on the halter too. If he does, I'll show you guys what to do in that case. 
And Craig, when Craig was here and taught that clinic where we learned this, Craig and Katie, Craig was the one that said, the longer it takes them to learn to step on it, and the more you've got to fuss around with them, the better they'll know it in the long run. Which just is kind of like, um, I don't know. I, just, I, I think that does make sense because they, when they do find the answer, it's going to mean more to them. I'm going to give him a little bit more time, and then I'm just going to move his feet again. Oh, there he did a different, he was thinking, he did something different than he's done before, stepping over it. There. He had a lick and shoe while his foot was on there. He's coming. All right, I'm going to send him. Move his feet and then offer it to him again and see if he gets on it quicker. I probably didn't move his feet long enough knowing that I'm doing a video. So that's what we want. I mean, we want both feet, but that's a step in the right direction, so I'm letting him have that. That is the right answer to Make sure that it keeps the block in the frame of my video. Mabel just came in. She sometimes likes to bark and thinks she's helping with the horses, especially when I'm doing groundwork and they're running around me. So if you hear a dog bark, that's her. Starting to figure it out. Starting to put it together. So my annoyance, uh, I kind of wave my hand around. There you go, I'm going to quiet it down a little more. Um, wave my hand around, click at him. And sometimes, if I had a massage whip with me, I'd tap the shoulder on the leg that I want up. like I'm switching my hand around now. There he's got his right front on it. I don't know if you can tell from there. So we're quiet. Just hold off. Put that out again. All 
one, his left front's on it, left front's on it, left front, and by on it, like a quarter of it's on it, but that's a step in the right direction, so we reward that. We'll get it. There, he's got the whole thing on it. Let that sink in, so give him some soak time. Then I'll ask for him to bring that right front up too. There he's licking chewing. This is where, I didn't even bring the dressage robot with me. That would have been handy just to tap on that right front. That was all that I wanted. too I forgot to mention it when I was talking about benefits of it if you've got one that's hard to load once they learn find the mark find the mark find the mark stand on the mark the mark's a good place you can even like throw this in your trailer and help with trailer loading there we are good boy so that's just that's what it looks like in the beginning in the very first time you get them to step on it and he didn't take quite as long but it's that same process oh boy so I am not thinking at all that there's any chance of him to ground high. So I'm just going to back him off and lead him with me. I don't want to um, lead him with me to shut my camera off. Oh, yes, that's good. And you don't want to get off it now. <laughs> all right, hope you guys enjoy. Um, don't forget, subscribe to our videos, please. See ya.